Hi, thank you. Nearly there. Uh, just uh, going to take 10 minutes to uh, share with you some work we've been doing. Um, first of all, you know, who is Radio Player? What are we? Well, we are backed by these amazing companies for which we're very, very grateful, particularly the Radio Centre backing. Thank you very much for your support and your belief here. Um, we also increasingly do business with these people who are the Radio Player countries who've licensed our technology. This is UK technology going to the rest of Europe in this case um, and you know the, the journalist in me needs to supply a bit of balance to what John just said about the uh, Brexit vote uh, and I would say that it would be much easier for us to continue this great work <laughs> exporting UK technology to Europe if we remained in Europe. <laughs> so uh, increasingly we're doing that sort of thing as well. Um, Working with non-profit organisations who do great stuff like Digital Radio UK and World DAB, uh, we don't have any resources of our own, so to build stuff we need to work with great companies like that. And increasingly we're talking on behalf of the radio industry to some big tech giants like that. LG and Audi I'm just going to touch on in a minute in terms of smartphones and cars. Um, this is kind of what we're meant officially to be looking at, the UX for radio on internet connected devices, that's a very dull phrase. So I think of it like this, keeping radio simple but smart. And the best tech is this, it is simple but smart. Um, how do we do that for radio? Um, well, this is what gets me out of bed every morning, is the 450 stations that, are, that there are in UK radio player now, uh, including some of those that were recently launched on those new multiplexes we just spoke about. These are our customers largely represented in this room. We're very, very grateful for the belief and the support from these stations who believe that doing stuff together, uh, technolog technological stuff together under the UK Radio Player banner is the right way to build our own future. Now, um, you very rarely see that sort of scale and that smart simplicity uh, on a daily basis in Radio Player. But there was a day recently when we did, unfortunately. And that was the day after... David Bowie died. I got into the office at five past eight, uh, quite upset because he was up there as one of my favourite artists of all time. And um, I decided to do a quick search on Radio Player. So I popped it open, whacked in the word Bowie. And because Radio Player automatically looks at everything that's playing right now across UK radio, we saw the scale of the tribute that UK radio was paying to David Bowie. All these stations were playing Bowie tracks at 8.05 on that morning, at that moment. And I've never seen that before. And it, it brought home to me the, the incredible power of the man and his art. But also, you know, I was quite pleased our systems were working well too. Because, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, you, you wouldn't have seen that sort of thing uh, before Radio Play. There was no single place that sort of brought all this information together in one place, in one user experience. A couple of things, cool things we've done recently, I can't talk about all of them, but this is um, Chromecast. This device here is 30 quid, uh, people are buying it to watch Netflix on, uh, plugging into their telly or into their speaker to listen to stuff on. We decided to make Radio Player and therefore all your stations available on Chromecast. So uh, that's what we did. Here I'm listening to the free radio um, podcast uh, in the office just to test it. Um, and this is an interesting one. This is the fourth generation web radio player. So the web product that we started with has gone through various iterations. This has got baked into it some really interesting features. I just want to take uh, 30 seconds to tell you about a few of them. Commercial capabilities largely. You heard Ollie talk earlier about DAX, Digital Audio Exchange. Well, baked into this radio player and therefore available to any of the stations that use it from today is full AdSwiz programmatic audio in-stream integration. So you can join DAX tomorrow if you want to. It's up to you. You can also uh, not join DAX and do uh, and monetize your streams through AdSwiz directly. Um, and there's another couple of uh, really cool ways that you can make money too. Um, I'm going to show you in a minute what happens when I click on the heart logo there because Global and Bauer have, t have been testing this on behalf of the industry as early adopters and we're very, very grateful for that. So uh, this is video pre-roll to the internationally approved VAST and VPAID standards. So those are standards for programmatic video uh, which 
any station can switch on tomorrow, and they attract really high CPMs. So here we are. I'm going to select heart from anywhere, and the radio player resizes automatically. Plays HD video pre-roll ad. I've shortened it here. And then the player resizes back down automatically and starts the radio stream. So this is the kind of responsive behavior that we want to see on mobile devices and on uh, computers, but also the sort of uh, commercial capabilities that we need to bake into our products. And that's what we've been doing on behalf of UK Radio. And you guys can switch that on whenever you wish from today. This is another cool thing we did, another world first. This is uh, an LG Stylus 2, the first smartphone with DAB digital radio inside it. And we decided to take this and build the world's first hybrid radio player app that switches automatically between free-to-air DAB and streaming. So I'll just show you what happens. Uh, you, you may see my uh, washing machine involved in this. Uh, because when I was demonstrating it in my house, the only place I could make the DAB signal drop was by putting it into the washing machine. So apologies for that. Alexis, you can get on switching sites and the like. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, but equally, price controls is the other option and it's worked very well in the long term. Um, um, I think things like making it all the more obvious what the other good deals out there are could help. So this is, um, so this is me dropping into car mode, which makes it much easier and simpler. Uh, to use uh, the smartphone radio player apps in your car, uh, but that also works on free-to-air DAB, and the receiver sensitivity in that uh, smartphone is really, really good. So I believe you could probably drive around using that to receive DAB, and obviously if it lost DAB, it would automatically flip to streaming. So, you know, that's a really good device, and we're going to be... Um, uh, actually, we've done a deal with LG and O2, because uh, O2 is the network it's launching on, and the radio player app is uh, going to be automatically on installed uh, for any customers that fire up this uh, phone on O2. Uh, we're also going to hopefully do some cross-industry promotions, some giveaways uh, of this phone across uh, radio stations in the UK. Uh, to support LG in what they're doing. We're going to make that hybrid app we've built work with FM as well as DAB, uh, and we're going to make all that code available to the industry so that if you want to, you can make your own radio apps hybrid when they're working on this device and other kinds of devices. But this is the kind of R&D-style work that we do at Radio Player, which is having real-world impacts uh, you know, on, on technologies um, being used by big companies. Right, the car... Industry, the car research that I talked about uh, right at the start. I uh, just want to take the last couple of minutes to talk you through the headlines of that. Great cars need great radios. That was our kind of mantra to start with. And we've always known that in the radio industry, anecdotally. People listen to the radio in their cars, they love it. But we've never had the data to take to car companies to prove it. And now we do. We talked to a big sample, 1,500 people across Europe, not just in the UK. And they weren't just people driving old bangers with FM radios. They were people driving new cars, less than, than three years old, with all the toys and gizmos in there as well. Uh, so first thing we thought when we... Um, oh, sorry, yes, we, we, just to show you that this was a very um, statistically significant sample, we, uh, we actually um, looked at the drivers of 22 different brands. Uh, that's what apparently we buy most of in the UK. Um, in Germany... It gets very patriotic. It's VW, Mercedes, BMW and Audi. And in France, equally so, Renault, Peugeot, Citroën. But uh, overall in the UK, we, we spoke to a really good spread of car owners across all these brands. And this is one of the first things we found when we looked at the data. 82% of people say they would never consider buying a car without a radio. And not only that, we talked to people about whether they were offered as a radio as an upgrade or a paid-for thing. Um, would they consider buying it? They said no. They said absolutely not. Unless it was free-to-air radio and we didn't have to pay for it, we would never consider buying it. 
Uh, this is, um, this is we, uh, along the way, we took a video of, of some of the respondents. So I'm just going to play you a few clips to illustrate that. I would hate a manufacturer that charged me for a radio because um, it's just something I always do. It's like it's part of my car now. Um, and because I listen to the radio everywhere I go, um, to not have that function or to have to pay for it would probably make me quite bitter. <laughs> Bitter, that's a really strong word. You know, when you start to kind of scrape away at people's uh, attitudes to radio, something as habitual as radio, they really start to get very emotional about their, their connection to it. Um, because, you know, and that leads to this kind of behaviour. Switching on the radio is automatic. 84% of our sample said they always or mostly listen on every journey. Seatbelt, ignition, radio. And we ask them why, why that is. And, and, and you know, they're using it as a really quite a, a combination of functional and emotional means. I tend to listen to Radio 1 in the morning just because I quite like the sort of upbeat music in the morning. It kind of wakes me up a bit. Probably like if I'm driving back late or if I'm driving back in the dark, I often like listen to a bit of heart or magic or something. That's often if I'm really tired, I can like really sing aloud to. <laughs> it stops me getting uh, sleepy. She's using radio, not, as, not just as a companion in her car, but to keep her safe, to keep her driving safe. The, um, and you remember I said uh, we only talk to drivers of modern cars. So they've got all the toys. They've got uh, Bluetooth. They've got uh, CD players. They've got iPhone integrations. Still, despite all those audio sources, despite all that entertainment on offer, 74% of everything that goes into their ears is radio in the car. Again, we asked them why, and they told us verbatim in their own words, you know, why they love radio so much when they're driving. Just take a moment to look at those words. You know, people would kill for that kind of brand engagement. Wouldn't drive without my friend. Can't imagine my car without it. It's part of my life. Vital component. Okay, these are brilliant, brilliant things that people are saying about the medium uh, that we work in. And that's why, uh, final point, um, when we said to them, of all these clever toys in your dashboard, if you could only keep one, what would it be? They overwhelmingly choose radio. I'll show you the chart in a minute. It's quite stunning. But first of all, look, here is Henry, who's a student. He's 22, studying geography. He's in the demographic that we often worry about in radio. He's explaining why radio is the most important thing to him in his car. I think listening to radio is... is it's quite a crucial part of, of the car because um, it gets a lot of people into music and uh, keeps people in touch with the world. So I think it's quite important to keep that as one of the main priorities in the car because I know a lot of people that rely solely on listening to the radio for their sort of news or their, their music intake. I know a lot of people who solely rely on listening to the radio for their news or music intake. He's 22, he's got a lot of young friends. I think, you know, if, if, if radio... Uh, if the future of radio is how he feels about it, then we're probably okay. And that's why this chart is so stunning. 69% of those people said they would only keep radio if they could only keep one option. And look over there where a lot of noise is being made about Spotify integrations into dashboards. Only 1% said they would keep music streaming. To me, this is uh, the sort of data that we need to take into those conversations with car companies to remind them how important radio is to their consumers. So that's what we're doing. We, along with Digital Radio UK and World DAB and other great organisations, are taking that research and having those meetings, building those relationships with car companies. We're prototyping as well, because I believe a prototype is worth a thousand meetings. So we're building the radios of the future as they might look for cars and taking those to car companies so we can talk about how these radio interfaces feel. We're improving the data that comes from you guys, the now playing data, the logos, um, and we're launching those hybrid products, those uh, really, really important in the car to get um, interfaces that switch seamlessly between DAB, FM, and streaming. Because that space there... In three years' time, five years' time, ten years' time, could either have a brilliant radio in it that automatically flips across platforms and keeps people with the content they love, or radio could be three menus down and hard to find and really crap to look at. And actually, that decision point is now because they're designing those dashboards as we speak. So that's why what we're doing is so important. 
Uh, final thought, another hybrid product that we've been spending uh, far too long building because it's been very, very, very challenging is nearly ready to launch. Uh, this is the Radio Player Car product, which is an aftermarket hybrid radio product, automatically flips between platforms in the way I've just described. It's now got the digital radio tick mark, I'm very happy to say, so we're ready to go ahead and launch. And we're looking for early adopters from across the radio industry to put these into your cars first. So if you'd like to be one of those people, those early uh, beta testers, come and see me afterwards and we'll put your name down. Thank you very much. There's more. If you Google great cars need great radios, you can get more on that research. Thank you.